Hey guys, and welcome back to the Coder's Legacy channel. In this video, we're going to talk about how we can pass data between multiple Takeinter windows. Now, multiple windows in Takeinter, managing them is pretty easy as long as they're independent of each other. You create two separate windows and they have nothing to do with each other. You just work on your new window because you have your main window, right? Then you make a new window, you do something on it, and then you close it. And then you go back to your main window. That's fine. But what if the new window that you create has something to do with the main window? Like it has some kind of values, some data to pass back into the main window. For example, in our tutorial here, we're going to discuss a settings window and our main window. Okay, the settings window is going to return some important information back to our main window, like maybe, you know, in games, we have a separate window for settings where you can adjust all those settings. So that settings window needs to reflect those changes back inside the main window, which is your game, right? So that's basically what we're doing here. So we need to find a way for the widgets inside the settings window, like an entry widget, like a radio button widget, like a check button. We need to somehow bring these values back into the main window. So that's what we'll be doing in today's video. I'm going to show you guys several techniques, not just one, on how to do this how to pass data from the settings window to the main window, then how to do the reverse, how to do it from the main window to the settings window. And then there are two or three ways of doing all this. So I'm gonna explain and try to build you guys concepts as, as well as I can. Okay, so without further ado, let's begin. I'm going to first create a button in the main window and this button is gonna trigger our settings window. Okay, so I'm gonna, gonna do parent soft.frame, text is gonna be open settings, and the command is going to be self dot uh, open, okay? Uh, sorry, uh, I just ran the code there. Where open is a function that we haven't defined yet, which I will do in a minute, okay? Just giving it some high padding. Now I'm going to define the open function, okay? Now I'm using a class based approach for my top level windows. Otherwise, I, I know some people like to define a top level window inside a function like this. That's that's fine, but I personally prefer the class-based approach because it also makes it easier to manage and pass data, pass values back and forth. And you'll understand why very soon. Okay, so what I'll do here is create our settings window. Okay, like, like so. And what I'm going to do actually is just run this code for now, just so we can see what we have here so far. Okay. So if I click this, then we get our window right here. Okay, cool. This is our settings window. It's kind of empty right now. So let's go ahead and put something in there. So the first thing I'll put is an entry widget. Okay. Uh, we'll just put in some ran random text here that we want to return back to our main window. Okay. So we'll see how we can do that. I'm just going to pack this widget right here. Just give it some high padding. Okay. And there we go. All right, cool. So what I need to do here actually is create a variable. If you're familiar with Takeinter, you already know this, but you need to create these variables uh, for the input based widgets, like the radio button, the check button, and the entry widget. They need to have these variables which store, you know, values. Okay. Basically, it's like this you use the text variable. Uh, text variable option over here and you pass that in here. Now, whenever the user through the GUI enters some value into the entry widget, it's going to go into this variable. Okay. And then we can do uh, var dot get to return its value. Okay. And we'll be doing this when we, uh, you know, as we proceed further in the tutorial. Okay. So that's our entry widget setup. Now we'll set up the radio button. Okay. Radio button. And we'll do top as well. Top is the top level widget as the parent. Okay. And this is going to take a value. Uh, we'll just rename this, by the way, to option one. And the value can be one. And the text can be simply option one. And I'm going to run this. Sorry. I mean, duplicate this twice. And just change this. And we need to create, as I mentioned earlier, we need to create a new variable for the radio button. Okay. And we can name these something more better, you know, some, something more intuitive. We can call that one input and we can call this one option. Okay. 
that makes uh, more sense. Okay, now we need to pass this in the variable parameter. Okay, cool. And pass an option in here. All right, now we need to pack our radio buttons in and we'll finally be ready to actually start the data sharing process. Just gonna pass in these values, copy paste this down here, change that to option two, and now we're ready. Okay, so if I click open settings, here's our settings window, and now we just need to, you know, begin passing in values. Okay, uh, to, to from the settings window to the main window. So I'll create a button for that. Okay, when we click on the button, it's going to send these values back to, back to, to the main window. Okay, pretty simple, right? So just create the button, top text can be submit, submit data, submit settings, or actually let's go with something more realistic, apply settings. We've all seen that, right? So we'll, in the command option, I'm going to do self.submit. I'm gonna go and create that submit button. Just give me a, a minute, gotta pack this in. Just give it some pad Y. All right, and now we'll go and define this function right down here and inside this function uh, ignore that inside this function what I'm gonna do is yeah good question what am I gonna do inside this function how am I gonna submit the data this is actually a good question and that's the entire point of this video how am I gonna do this well good question what I'm gonna do actually a very handy trick now again I'm gonna show you two or three different ways of doing this so what I'm gonna do here the approach that I'll take for the start for our first approach is to define an update function over here okay now i'll just leave this empty but what i want to do is call this function which is in our main window by the way i'll call this function from the settings window okay now all of this will make sense trust me uh, what i'm going to do here is actually pass this function to our settings window okay Passed update function, a, refer, a, re, a function reference, the function name to the settings window. And over here, we'll just call it update. Also, it, it doesn't really matter. We could call this function or whatever. Okay, but I'll just keep the name the same just to avoid any, you know, uh, confusions. So over here, I'll do it self.update is equal to update. And the reason I'm doing this is so we can access the update function in different functions of the settings window class. Otherwise, update has only been passed to the init function, so it's only available initially to this init function. But I want it to be available in the submit function, so, I'm, so I did, you know, declared it using self. So I can now, now I can do self.update, and in this function, I'm gonna call this function now, okay? So if I just leave this empty for now, like I don't pass any parameters to it, I can just come over here and print update function from main window or update function belonging to main window was called. Okay, a, a bit long, but uh, it'll get our point across. So when I click this apply settings button, we get this, you know, on the console, you can see down here, updated function belonging to main window was called. So that's step one. We are now calling a function from the top level window that belongs to our main window. So now it's pretty natural to think that we can now start passing and sharing data. So what we can do is actually first make these self so that we can access them in our submit function. And we'll need to change that accordingly over here. Change that to self as well. And where else? I think we used input somewhere. Yes, over there. So we need to change that to self.input. And now over here, I'm gonna pass self.input and pass self.option to our update function, which belongs to our main window. And now we just need to, you know, put these over here as parameters. Again, they don't need to have the same name, but I'm just doing that to keep things clear. Okay, so print input and print option and let's just add some helpful prompts entry widget value okay and this one is the radio button value okay so if I run this code now what you see is that uh, let me enter something in here like high graphics okay I want high graphics on my game 
assuming this is the settings window for a game that is so I'm gonna click on option 2 and I'll click on apply settings and what did we get here okay this is actually expected we got uh, pi var 0 and pi var 1 don't worry that's not a problem and that's because I forgot to call the get functions on these two variables okay uh, you, you need to call get to get their actual value okay so if I call this now and do that again high graphics and if I select option 2 we'll get our values over there so see we just successfully passed in data from the settings window to the main window and now we can do anything with it now we now we can like create a label over here and let me just create a label first okay uh, call it soft.frame the parent give it some text and we can just give it a null text for now okay we can we can actually do that so i'll just pack it in now pad y is equal to 10 and now what i'll do here is self.label and what we'll do is actually well there are many ways of changing the text on this thing uh, we'll, we'll go with the configure method and over here in here i'm going to pass input uh, I'm gonna pass a string in here obviously because text the text parameter only accepts strings and if I remember correctly I think option is gonna be an integer so I need to convert this to uh, a string so if I do this now and I'll do some typing over there and now we can see here that uh, it's printed out over there uh, in the label and if I adjust this the label updates as well. Okay, so I, this is just, I, I wanted to show you how we can reflect these changes in the actual take inter widgets besides just, you know, printing out stuff. So that's how we do it. Okay, and actually there should be a space in there or a comma. Okay, cool. So that's basically how we can do it. Now let me just show you a little more just so we can get that entire concept across. Uh, I did say I would show you how to access the main window uh from oh hold on yeah i've shown you how to access the main window from the settings window but i haven't shown you how to access the settings window from the main window so let me show you that so first thing i'll do is actually declare self.settings as a global parameter sorry self.settings self.settings window as a global parameter okay and self.settings is equal to settings window over here Okay, and why are we getting this error? We have an error somewhere? Oh, uh, what's the problem? It says it's not closed. Could have sworn it is though. Uh, some, oh, of course. Okay, anyways, um, now that that's, that's fixed, let's continue, where was I? All right, so I made this global, didn't I? Now what I want to do here, is uh all right i'm gonna create an i'm gonna have to create a different button for this okay and we'll call this update settings we don't usually do this so we don't change the settings window from the main window but i just want to show you guys how it's gonna work right uh we'll just call it config okay self.config now let me go down here and define this new function called config uh and this is going to change the settings window okay now let's take a look at the settings window for a second let's say for example what i want to do is put something inside this widget inside the self.input variable let me show you so let me show you something i'm going to do self.settings window dot input dot set and then i'm going to pass in a string here uh, default value okay and I'm going to well, the padding is way too high okay so I'm gonna open the settings window I'm gonna move it over there I'm gonna click on update settings and there we go we just saw that value appear in there now let me explain how this really happened so we have our settings window it's a global variable now which means it's accessible from anywhere it's initialized to none because the settings window is closed by default okay 
So when we call the settings window constructor, basically it returns that object. And then anything that we declared using self, like input or option, we can now select those. Pretty cool, right? So we can easily do self.settingsWindow.input.set. Okay, so it's really cool how all of this actually works. Okay, so that's how you can access something from the main window that's in the top level window. Pretty cool, right? Now, if you actually take the concepts I taught you guys in this tutorial, you can actually use this to transfer data between anything, between uh, two different top level windows. Like there's a main window, then two, two different top level, level windows. You can transfer data between them like that. Like the uh, one top level window can transfer data to the frame, the, to the main window, then the main window can you know insert that value in the other top level window. So that's how you can create a whole connection. And if you structure your application properly, anything is possible. Okay, just remember the key lessons today are, you know, the the effects of declaring something with self, okay, and uh, the concept of passing functions between, uh, you know, different windows. And one last thing I will mention is that we can, instead of passing a function, we can just pass self. And what is self? Self is basically our main window. So what we could do now is just call this main window, okay, and we could do something like this, main window dot update. And like this, we can access anything inside the main window, anything inside the main window declared using self, like the label, we can actually access the label uh, inside uh, this window now, because if I do something like this, if I do print main window dot label dot text, all right, I think we access the text attribute like this. So if I do this, uh, oh, okay. Now we can actually see here that it actually did print out because the default value uh, for that label was null, right? Let's just call it default. And if I run this code now, you can actually see default printout whenever we trigger the settings window. And that's because in the settings window, we had this printout statement where we're accessing the label of the main window. But I, the reason why I didn't do this initially, because I don't think it's a great idea to just pass in a whole reference like that to, to the main window. Uh, I feel like that's a bit, uh, you know, you're kind of giving access to like everything instead of just the one function that we needed. But you might need to do that later on if you begin doing a lot of interaction, okay? So I think I taught you guys pretty much everything there is to know about this, okay? Just be a little careful. Um, Hold on, let me just fix something. There's something I just want to point out to you guys. Okay, um, a slight pitfall. If you call if you call update settings without opening the window first, that'll give you an error. Okay, that's because it's still none. So just put a check for that. Uh, something like if self dot settings window is not is equal to none, then and only then do this, okay? So be careful with validation as well. All right, and that's about it. That's all I wanted to say. See you guys in a later video.